This show contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Movies with Ron. Movies with Ron. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Movies with Ron. All right, I had another dream. All right. While I was sleeping. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back to Dreaming with Chris. <laughs> it was kind of a nightmare. I, uh, I had a wife and kids. We were at home. In our suburban home. Sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> Anyways, the wife pulls me aside and she's like, there's a fucking monster coming towards our house. <laughs> Do something. So I realize that before this happened, I went and opened the garage to let the family dog out to relieve himself. Oh, no. So I'm like, I got to close this fucking garage. <laughs> Is it nighttime? Yeah, yeah. I go to the door. You know, the one that leads to the garage. You open it on the walls of the button to close the garage. It's going to be real quick. I don't want the monster to get in there. So I get right up to the door and I hear this. Damn. And it is the monster already coming through the garage. Oh, my God. And it's like a cluttered garage. It's like knocking into stuff. It's going to come through this door that I'm standing right behind. But then I hear, right behind the door, at my feet, the dog is barking. So he's right there. Oh, Damn, right there, like between you and the monster. Yeah. In order to save the dog, I have to give the monster a chance to get into the fucking house. Like, you can, like, open the door real quick, let the dog in, but you you will have seen the monster then, and he will have seen you. Oh, yes, yes. This is... This is why it's a dream. This oh, is my yeah, head. Man. This is my brain fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is like a decision in life you have to make. And uh, then I woke up. Hey, man, I just want to know what your wife was wearing. <laughs> Welcome to episode 87 of Movies with Ron, the podcast where my older brother recaps a movie he saw from beginning to end for me and you, because we like his versions better. It's okay if you've seen the movie. It's okay if you haven't seen it. The experience is unique. So let's get it on. I'm Chris, your MC for the time being. Here with me tonight, our sound guy, Rick. What's up, everybody? Nurse Candy. Hey there. And here he is, folks. He's the bullcracker, death on foot. You know him, you love him. He's Ron. 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 Yes! 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 Hey, Ron. Hey, guys. What's going on? Let's all congratulate Ron on a good job with Hellraiser last week. Oh, my God. Good job. Thanks, guys. Had so much fun. Rick, what were you doing instead? I went to a local premiere. Oh, like a movie premiere. Yeah, for a local movie. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it was all local. Sounds exciting. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I went to the premiere and I was kind of excited because it's local shit. We're, it's it's our area. It's it's coming from the heart of our area, the downtown. Yeah. And I got to say, I was underwhelmed. <laughs> Ron, you ever seen a local movie? <laughs> yeah. I want my two hours back. <laughs> I love poop. Su- <laughs> <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> hey, you guys, before the show, Candy was like, hey, can you work in somewhere in the episode? It's poop. It stinks. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, Candy. <laughs> Look to the future. <laughs> It was my new favorite episode. I can't help it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's everybody's. Well, you know what they say? If you're like a director, you have to organize a film set seven times, and then your eighth time, which is basically the eighth film you make, that's the one that you want to show people. Yeah. But it's, it's nice. It's a local thing. If you put your time and effort into it, you make a production, you want to show people. Of course. And no one goes expecting uh, anything Worth their time. <laughs> this was a horror one you saw. This was a horror. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's supposed to be like a bunch of different stories. 
uh, like chapters. The movie split up into chapters, right? And they're all supposed to kind of, kind of connect, yeah, and make sense. And they all connect via this one main story where this guy with a mustache and long hair is. He's had this dream, and he's telling us all about different parts of his dream, and those are the chapters. Those are the little snippets of crazy horror shit that happens. Oh, you mean I could just make a movie of my dreams? Yes. Damn, here we go. I already want my two hours back. <laughs> <laughs> but folks, if you want to learn more about this movie and uh, what it's called, send a shout out to Rick on Twitter. He's at Ducks Hit Rick. Winchester. The Winchester? That's right. Yep, the Winchester. <laughs> Fucking horror movie. Yeah. Yes. All right. I, I read, uh, this is for people who like the movie The Witch. Remember when The Witch came out? Oh, really? It was a nice kind of low-key, kind of boring, but really effective horror movie. Yeah, I wouldn't say really effective, but effective. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was okay. Good. And they got Helen Mirren and Jason Clark to be in this movie. Fuck yeah. Yeah, man. And it's... Uh... John Connor. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's the not... poor man's John Connor. <laughs> okay. That's... He's the best we got. <laughs> right. He is who we have now. <laughs> John Connor. What's his name? Jason Clark? Jason Clark. He's... Yeah, JC, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing actor. I like him. He's in my wheelhouse. Like, I pay attention to him, stuff he's doing. He is the guy who would play the husband at the garage door. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Helen Mirren plays the dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Jason Clark, he's um, started off in dramatic television. And then uh, I remember him most from the, the Ape movie. That was Yeah, when man. He made his big jump into films. He was at... Uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he was the main dude. I wanted to see more of him. Then he was John Connor. And uh, I don't know. I think that kind of hurt hurt his uh, re reputation, career, you know? John Connor? Yeah. Ah, he's in the Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right. <laughs> That's upward mobility. Yeah. And Helen Mirren, who is a, a world treasure. Oh, yeah. And she was a... Yeah, if you've seen the posters of this movie, the marketing materials, the Winchester House and Helen Mirren. That's what were used to sell this movie. Yes. Which is impressive. Mm -hmm. You know, very admirable. And the poster, which is Helen Mirren's face, but it's like split down the center. Yeah. And it's open and then there's like rooms to the house inside. Yeah. It's all about this this woman, Mrs. Winchester, I assume. Yes. And her house. <laughs> okay. Her haunted house. This is my haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, directed by Michael and Peter Spierig. Yeah. Yeah. Twins. I just learned this. They're twin brothers. They're directors. And they are fucking talented. Yeah, they showed up and thanked me for coming to the movies tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Why do they keep doing that? I don't know. They smelled like hot dogs, though. <laughs> Anyways, they, they made a little film called Predestination. Anyone seen that? No. Ethan Hawke, Philip K. Dick's story. No, didn't they do Daybreakers? They Before that, they did Daybreakers. Is that, that fucking awesome vampire movie. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, it was great. Very conceptual. They're real, um, they're story-driven guys, and uh, I really like them. What made me discover them? Their first big film in 2003 called Undead. Yes. They made a zombie film. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, and it took place in Australia. Spirit Brothers are Australian. If I can recommend a movie, Undead from 2003. It's got like a 5.4 on IMDb. I've never recommended such a low-rated movie. <laughs> yeah. I loved it, though, when yeah, I first too. saw it. It's great. They also made Jigsaw. <laughs> so uh, there's that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Swing and a miss. Yeah. Well, right now is when Candy says... I want to play a game. <laughs> Perfect opportunity. Candy? <laughs> Where's our game? Uh, today we will be playing When Was Your Last Bowel Movement? <laughs> oh, shit. For 50 points apiece. <laughs> I'm ready. I have this one on point. <laughs> Extra points for color and consistency. This is horrible. No. I'm sorry. Damn. I've gone way too far. You really loved that last episode. Yeah, what's up with you and the poop? Uh, poop is great. It's poop. 
<laughs> Guys, she's a nurse. She's like desensitized. I just wanted to, to segue yeah. into that. <laughs> Let's talk about your poop. <laughs> hey, mom. This was Candy who did this. <laughs> Mine was about three hours ago. It's pretty satisfying. My anus kind of itches now. Though. Oh my god! Mine was about fifteen minutes ago. Rick, when was Candy's last shit? <laughs> last night before dinner. Incorrect. Shit. Today at around ten thirty a.m. Mm, close. Close. Um, after lunch. It was after lunch. <laughs> All right. I win the game. I win game. <laughs> Anyways, how's your sex life? <laughs> Don't ask. I had a dream the other night. Don't I'm... touch me, motherfucker. <laughs> Have you ever had a significant other wake you up to tell you all of the weird shit you were saying in your sleep? Yep. <laughs> so and Jeff, then Jeff... she dumped me. <laughs> <laughs> you just kept telling somebody to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's, he goes, I hope it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, that's when you go. Apparently, I have a lot of pent up tension that I get out while I'm sleeping. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's when you go, I wasn't asleep. <laughs> <laughs> what was your wife wearing in that dream? <laughs> <laughs> What'd she look like? How come she knew about the monster and you didn't? I don't know. That's the kind of husband some... you yeah. are, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're damn right. Hey, <clears throat> speaking of dreaming next to your spouse, uh, have you ever hit your spouse <laughs> in your dream? <laughs> and like, I wasn't oh. even, dude. Well, no. I was. I used to be married. I poked her in the eye once, <laughs> and it was kind of bad. Oh, like it was like uh, with your finger, and then uh, and then I woke up. Like, the eye poke happened while I was asleep. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, fuck, what do I do? <laughs> and she, oh, man, she hated me. And the thing is, like, we didn't even get out of bed. But it was like, it was still traumatizing. Like, it was scarring uh, emotionally. But we're still, like, in bed and we're still tired. And it's like, we get in, like, a mini fight. And it's like, I was asleep, babe. And then it's like, let's go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> For you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is chris with his eyes closed and he just like moves his hand up ext <laughs> extends his finger and jabs it into her fucking eye <laughs> all right everybody get your rifles locked and loaded because we're about to we're about to blow you <laughs> away. away because this is winchester on movies with ron it's showtime Fuck yeah, here we go. Coming at you. <laughs> Get the people out. Coming on you. <laughs> Get the people out. Come on. Get the people out. There were so many logos on this movie, I've decided to never talk about logos again. Ever. <laughs> oh. Say goodbye. <laughs> here, Candy, have some fireball. You're going to need it. <laughs> So we just start with a black screen and it says, inspired by actual events. And then right away, Winchester. And the title card of the movie actually really reminded me of like late 70s, early 80s horror. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. credits is pretty cool. I like yeah. that. That's original. You ever make a movie? <laughs> so then there's a mansion. The Winchester? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. <laughs> we see it from the sky, and it's, uh, you know, pretty big house. What year is it? 1906. Oh, okay. In San Jose, California. So we see this place, and, you know, now we're, like, in it, and it's, like, all under construction, but it's, like, 1906 construction, so everybody's, like, swinging hammers and working hand saws, uh, but they're wearing, like, shirt and tie. With like a watch chain and shit like that. <laughs> so we got two people in bed. Turns out it's a woman and a young boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and the boy wakes up. Have you ever had a dream that was so scary? It woke somebody else up. 
So the kid wakes up, he hears like some singing off in the distance, right? And he's like, oh, I better go check this shit out. He walks off into this dark mansion. The woman wakes up and she's like, Henry, Henry. She goes off to find Henry. Fucking finds him in this hallway, standing at the end of it, staring at her with a fucking burlap bag over his head. Oh. And she's like, oh, hey, there you are. Holy shit. (laughs) And then he just like walks out of the hallway. (laughs) So she has to like keep following, right? Turns the corner onto some stairs and finds him standing there with this fucking bag over his head. And she's like, man, what the fuck is up with you? And he's just fucking standing there, like pointed up towards, you know, the top of the stairs, which end nowhere. They just go right up into the ceiling. Oh, It's fucking weird, man. She lifts the bag off his head and his eyes are fucking white. Oh. But then they go color. So it's like fine now, right? And then he points up at the ceiling where the stairs end and he's like, He's coming for us. She looks up there like, what? Fuck it. We live in a mansion with all kinds of weird shit, okay? (laughs) There's nothing up there. What's going on? And then she fucking hears somebody upstairs like, walking around. And then we cut to San Francisco. All right. (laughs) And there's a dude in a whorehouse. And it's John Connor. Fuck yeah. (laughs) And he's like laid out. He's got this whore on him, and he's like, high as balls. <laughs> <laughs> and they are doing what every kid did in 1906, laudanum. Oh. That's right. They are dripping it onto each other's tongues and anuses. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that and then make an episode. I hear it burns a little. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they are getting fucked up. <laughs> anyway, because he's all high, he starts talking to this whore like, yeah, so, you know, about, like, what do you think controls what? Like, your mind or your body? And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't know, you know, it's mind and body, you know, I don't know, I'm afraid of stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, fear, you know, fear, it's only in your mind, you know. Uh, you know, if you just think about it. And while he's telling her the story, he does this trick with a dollar bill where he folds it in half and then he balances it on his two fingers and then he pulls one finger away and it's, like, still balanced there. And it's amazing. (laughs) So that was his analogy. You know, fear is an illusion. Then there's a knock on the door and he's like, all right, I'll get it. And I'm like, what? Don't you have horrors for that there? (laughs) (laughs) There's a a madam. (laughs) And the guy at the door is like, yeah, I'm looking for uh, Dr. John Connor. And he's like, well, that's me. This is my house. (laughs) And I was like, oh. Oh, there you go. And then the whores are like, okay, John, we're leaving. <laughs> so, you know, he was just hanging out at home and called the whores over. Yeah, <laughs> nice. And as the whores are leaving, the, this guy at the door is like, yes, hello, I'm Harry Dickenballs from, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm the chief legal officer of uh, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. And he's like, yeah, cool, dude, I'm so high. <laughs> and the guy's like, check this shit out, man. The Winchester Repeating Arms Company. The guy who owned it, he died left 51% of it to his wife, Sarah. That's Helen Mirren. We think she's crazy. You know, the, we, the board of directors. We think she's crazy, and we want a psychological evaluation. Oh, so you can, uh, you know, take control of her company from her. Well, you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. No, man, you don't understand. This bitch is crazy, okay? Back when they started this company... She bought uh, an eight-bedroom house and has been continuously adding on to it for 25 fucking years. There's like almost 100 rooms in this house now. It's under endless construction. All of her floor plans, they're all chaotic. There's fucking doors that open to nowhere and all all kinds of weird-ass shit. And we think that is the works of a uh, uh, chaotic, crazy mind. (laughs) So we'd like an assessment of her mental state. Yeah, no, I'm good. (laughs) Now, seriously, man... uh, Name your price. Uh, Laudanum. <laughs> Seriously, come on. How how much do you owe? I, I We can fucking take care of it. Uh, 300? The guy's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. We'll pay you six. And then it just cuts to John Connor in a fucking carriage. <laughs> getting chased by the T-1000. <laughs> <laughs> While he's in the carriage, he's like reading a brochure on the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. Oh, yeah. Oh, they make guns. <laughs> I see rifles and such. And he turns a page and there's now they also make roller skates. (laughs) And he's like, huh. 
and a new thing called a dildo. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Dildo. <laughs> he gets out of the carriage, and there's like 500 men, like hammering each other. <laughs> you know, hammering nails into wood, cutting shit, and moving it. There's like, oh, all this construction happening. He talks to the foreman, who is Tucker from the Insidious movies. Whoa. All right, that's right, Angus Sampson. God bless him. <laughs> How does he do in this movie? He acts exactly like Tucker. <laughs> like morose and sarcastic. <laughs> John's like, yeah, man. So uh, endless construction, huh? It's pretty uh, fucking weird. Because like, yeah, you know, we uh, we do whatever she wants. Because she's like endless money, right? Uh -huh. Some of these rooms, you know, like that garden room over there, uh, they won't even last one season before we tear them down and, and rebuild something else. Oh, wow. John Connor looks over at the garden room and he's triggered <laughs> for some reason that we don't know. But the garden room is boarded up. It's got this one weird board over the door with all these nails in it. It's like off limits. He's like, yeah, you know, I'll go ahead and get Miss Marion for you. She'll, uh, she'll get you taken care of. John's like sitting in the office waiting for this lady when shit all of a sudden starts moving around in the office. Like something's hanging on the desk and it's just like moving by itself. And he's like, oh, no, we uh, fucking ghosts and shit like already. <laughs> and then there's a cabinet on the wall and it starts like, bum, 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 bum. And you're like, damn, dude, they ain't wasting any fucking time. Here. <laughs> yeah. And he like, he gets up to go and investigate it. And he's just about to open it up when it fucking opens by itself. And there's a maid in there like Dustin. <laughs> and it turns out it's like a secret entrance that all the house staff knows about, you know? It's huh. like the house is like filled with that kind of shit. So then Marion comes in, who is played by some lady. She's like, okay, look, my Aunt Sarah, you know, she's very rich. She's very busy. Okay. And we know why you're here. So I, I expect you to treat her with the utmost respect. Okay. And he's like, yeah, yeah, totally. Now I need to know, are you carrying any firearms on you? Uh, no, ma'am. Good, because Aunt Sarah forbids it. Just like all the rest of us, you are a guest in her home, and you will follow her rules. Uh, okay, yeah. So there's that, and uh, you gotta stay out of her personal areas. And also, Aunt Sarah would appreciate it if you were not drinking before the dinner hour. Her sense of smell is just as keen as mine. She's like, come on, I'll show you to your room. Gives him a tour of the house, like a, you know, a loose tour. Going through the grand ballroom, which is a lot less grand than you would think. It's very small. All sorts of shit like this room was built without any nails. And you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> so almost 100 rooms in this house. It's very easy to get lost. And there is like a full house staff. Like, be your guest, be your guest. Fucking dusting shit and cooking and everything, right? Wow. They have to walk up this weird winding staircase of stairs that are only like a couple of inches tall. He's like, this is very strange. <laughs> yeah, well, she has arthritis and it hurts her to lift her feet. So, you know, a lot of stuff in this house is like this. They go into his room and there are these weird pipes sticking out of the wall. He's like, what the hell is that? It's a communication device. And each pipe has a room name above it. Yeah, you can just like yell into the tube and people in that room can hear you. <laughs> and I was like, this won't be used later. <laughs> He's like, wow, this is cool. It's like state of the art back then, right? All right, I'll see you later. Wash your dick. <laughs> Aunt Sarah's going to join us for dinner. So he's by himself and he's like looking into this little mirror and he's like, you are a fraud. And he's like taking laudanum. Like he's like a <laughs> drunk and a drug addict. But he's a doctor, okay? Okay. So he's like looking at his drugs, okay, while the mirror like ee, 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 turns to the side and it points at this chair in the corner of the room. This is from the movie preview. And he's like, ah, the mirror moved. Okay, I'll just move it back. And uh, anyway, I'll go back to my drugs. And then it moves again. And he's like, Jesus Christ. It happens like three or four times. Finally, he moves it back and there is a fucking kid behind it with these white fucking eyes staring at him. And he's like, holy shit. He jumps back and then he like moves the mirror so he can see behind it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Nobody's there. Oh my gosh. He's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, all right. 
And then the mirror moves again, and now there's a like another dude sitting in the chair in the corner of the room, like inside the mirror, and he's got white eyes too. And it's like, fuck! It's like a fucking double jump scare. Damn. Yeah, it was cool. So he's all flipping out, and then there's a knock on the door. He opens it up, and there's like this creepy little houseboy servant standing there. And he's just like, dinner is in 10 minutes, sir. He's like, uh, yeah, okay, uh, kind of freaked out. I uh, thought somebody was in my room. <laughs> And the guy's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. So he goes to dinner, and he's sitting at the table across from Marion and Henry, the two from the beginning of the movie. So they're sitting there, and Henry's being like a little asshole at the dinner table. He's like banging his little metal toys together. Marion, his mother, has to be like, I'm sorry about my son. You know, his father died. His father just died. That's why we're here, staying at the house with Aunt Sarah. And he's like, oh, well, then I am so sorry for your loss. And the little boy goes, I'm not. <laughs> John's like, you know, I recently lost someone, too. Uh, so if there's anything I can do, you know, to help you, you know, just just let me know. And Marion looks at him like, oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, you know, Aunt Sarah chose you herself to do this uh, mental fitness exam. He's like, fucking really? Like, she knows about this? Yeah, yeah. And then we see Sarah coming through the house and she's wearing this like black veil of mourning and all of the servants are like, oh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. They're all like getting out of her way and bowing to her and shit. One of these butlers is the pilot from Mad Max. <laughs> John Connor's still sitting there waiting for dinner to start and he's like looking at the bottle of sherry across the room. <laughs> And he gets eye contact with that houseboy servant who's like looking at him and he moves his head like, yeah, over there, over there. Give me some of that sherry. <laughs> and the kid just fucking ignores him. All right. And John Connor is actually like, man, what the fuck? Like he gives him a look like that. Sarah comes in, they sit down, they introduce, you know, themselves. And he's like, yes, uh, you know, your, your company, the Winchester Repeating Arms, you know, it's uh, you know, very superior. Oh, really? At what? Uh, you know, she's like, at killing. <laughs> and he's like, well, I wasn't going to say that, but, uh, you know, how about those roller skates? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yeah, yeah, cool. That, w that was my idea. You know, I'm trying to do things that are a little less deathy. And it turns out the board doesn't like that either. So whatever, they have more awkward dinner and uh, they go to bed. All together. <laughs> <laughs> nah, John's like in bed. Fucking dripping more laudanum onto his tongue, like, getting high, baby. <laughs> and he starts having memories and visions of his wife, Ruby. Obviously, she's the one he lost. And, uh, you know, he's all traumatized and shit. And he's, like, holding this thing in his hands. And you're like, man, what the fuck is that? He's, like, twirling it in his fingers. And then we see it, and it's a fucking bullet. He's like, I want to be with you, Ruby. I want to be with you together forever. And that is engraved on the side of the casing. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, it's fucking weird. And then he starts hearing noise coming out of the fucking tubes. <laughs> and he's like, oh, Jesus Christ. And he gets down. He's like, um, hello? And then it's coming out of this one tube. Coming out of the tube from the garden room. Mm -hmm. Uh, hello? And then he just yells into the tube, hello, hello, hello. And then he puts his ear up to it to listen. And a fucking finger comes out. Oh, God. Really? And goes to poke him in the ear. And he, like, just misses it. <laughs> he never saw it coming. So he leaves the room to go and explore the house. Remember, easy to get lost in. So it's like, you might want to rethink what you're doing. <laughs> it's all dark and quiet and shit. And then he hears some noise coming from behind a curtain. He peeks in there and he sees Lady Sarah Winchester opening up a secret safe and, like, gazing at whatever she's got in there so while he's spying on her he hears other people coming down the hall and he's like oh shit i better move that's when she stops because she hears him outside the door and he's like oh man now i am fucked he goes and runs if he turns the corner he's gonna run into those people so now he has no choice but to jump into this tiny door underneath some stairs he sits there and waits for her footsteps to pass and he's like oh all right cool and then he hears a noise deeper down in the room that he's in which it turns out is a staircase. And he looks down and sees this little red fucking ghost girl coming up the stairs at him. <laughs> he's like, Jesus, fuck. And he jumps out the door, looks down, nothing there. Oh. So we got Marion and Henry in bed again. Henry wakes up, he hears a noise. And I'm like, 
Man, hope you like fucking noises in the house. (laughs) (laughs) This one's coming from under his bed. So he peers down. He gets like upside down, which is the most vulnerable way to look under your bed. (laughs) As everyone knows. Every kid knows. He's like, hey, hey, what's down here? There's nothing. And then a fucking roller skate just like slides across the floor. And it skates out of the room. And he's like, oh, I better go see what's going on. <laughs> nothing weird about that. <laughs> John Connor's still exploring. He goes outside and finds the garden room. And then remember, it's got that piece of wood with all these nails in it. Right. He's like, oh, man, I really want to get in this room. And he goes to another door. It's blocked off the same way. We can see somebody moving around inside that fucking garden room. Damn. Yeah, it's like got glass walls, like a greenhouse, right? But they're all kind of foggy. Somebody is in there moving around, but the doors are fucking nailed shut. Oh. John Connor has to hide again because there's some workers coming because the workers, they're there day and night. I don't know why he felt the need to hide from them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like looking around and all this shit happening. And now fucking Henry's walking around the house with a bag on his head again. <laughs> He walks right by some worker who's like sawing a piece of wood and doesn't notice him. And now we see where he's going. He's walked to the edge of the second story balcony, which has no railing because it's under construction. Mm. He's just standing there. John Connor sees him and he's like, who the fuck is that shit? (laughs) Then the kid starts to step off the edge and he's like, holy shit, get out of the fucking way. He runs and saves that kid, catches him. Okay. Like he hits the ground like it hurt him. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the kid, he, he lived. John pulls the bag off the kid's head and his fucking eyes are white. And he just looks at John and goes, I see you. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> we see Sarah Winchester watching the whole thing in her black veil. The next day, the mental assessment begins and they're in her office. <laughs> She's like, you know what? Thanks a whole lot for saving my fucking grandson's life. You know, he saw his dad die. And he's like, oh, Jesus, really? Why is he such an asshole? (laughs) He's like, I don't know, but you know what? I'm going to be honest with you, but I need you to be honest with me too. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so are you a drug addict? Are you on drugs? (laughs) Oh, shit. And he's like, uh, (laughs) what are you talking about? (laughs) She's like, come on, complete honesty now. Are you on drugs? Do you abuse medication? And he's like, no. She's like, uh, why don't you tell me about your wife? Ruby is her name? And he's like, oh, Jesus, man, what the fuck's going on? You know what? I'm going to ask questions here. She's like, check it out, bitch. I'm cursed. <laughs> he's like, fuck you talking. <laughs> She's like, you know, no, it's a fact. If you profit from violence and fucking, you know, death, you going to be cursed. And I'm followed all the time by shadows. And he's like, uh, we can call those shadows guilt if you want. <laughs> That's what's really happening here, right? She's like, no, fucking real shadows, ghosts and shit. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm always full of fear. He's like, oh, fear. I have a thing about that. <laughs> Look, watch this dollar bill trick. <laughs> he fucking does it. <laughs> she is unmoved. Not like the whore. She's like, you know, if you want to give that bill to someone on my staff, I'm sure they'd love it. You can also do the same with the nickel that is inside of it. Then that's like what's holding the bill up uh, on his finger. Uh, and I was like, ooh, <laughs> I gotta do that trick. She's like, all right, so check it out. I guess uh, this session is over, but uh, I'm going to confiscate all of your medication. And he's like, what? <laughs> She's like, no, no, no. You need, a, you need clarity if I'm going to open my house up to you. Like for real, for real. And then it cuts to him being confined to quarters. Oh, wow. It's like, oh, okay, prisoner. Nice. Fucking seriously. Prisoner of a billionaire. (laughs) The first thing he does is goes for the laudanum, which is gone already. (laughs) And he's like, fuck. He finds a letter on his desk from Harry Dickenballs. And he's like, I hope everything's going good. Here's some money. He's like, yeah, great. Is there any laudanum in the fucking envelope? <laughs> hey, he's jonesing, baby. Well, nothing better to do now, but uh, I guess I'll start writing my report. And he's like, the lady says she sees ghosts. So he's like, gonna fuck her over, you know, because he's so mad. Yeah. So then outside, these bells start tolling, and it's like really fucking late at night. He's like, man, what the fuck? He opens up his door, and there's that butler, the pilot, <laughs> who's just sitting outside of his door, like making sure he doesn't come outside. That's what he gets paid for. Have a seat here all day. 
The gyro captain? Yeah, the gyro captain. That's okay. right. That's his name. And he's like, man, what is up with these bells? Why do they toll like that? It's so fucking late. And the gyro captain's like, it gets bigger when I pull on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out the bells toll at midnight every night. So he's like, all right. He goes back in his room. He looks out the window and he sees the lady Winchester in her black veil, like walking around all the construction and shit. And it's very strange. You know why she's walking through there? And he's like, all right, I'm climbing out my window because I want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking better every day. <laughs> so now he's exploring the grounds again, okay? He escaped, can't, you know, same room all fucking night. And he ends up at those weird stairs that lead up into the ceiling, and he's like, <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he walks around some more, and he finds Sarah again, and now, oh, yeah, he starts buying on her again. She's sitting in this room, okay, with her veil on, and she's looking up into the air and kind of talking to no one. And we don't hear what she's saying, but she's her hand is furiously moving across a piece of paper with a pencil. So she's doing like automatic writing and shit, okay? Yeah. She's obviously interacting with the spirits somehow. Yeah. We see what's on the paper, and it is an incredibly detailed drawing of a plan for the next room she wants to build oh mm. so it's like the ghosts are designing the house yeah and then the lights in the room they all blow out there are no lights okay it's all candles <laughs> so they all they all go out and it's fucking dark and it gets all cold and sarah's like oh jesus and uh john connor you know he's staring in through the the crack in the door and all of a sudden there's a fucking ghost that comes in the way of the door and is like staring at him like <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> What do you want, asshole? <laughs> and he's like, oh, fuck. And he fucking runs. Gets back into his room. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It must be still some laudanum in my system, okay? Or it's just withdrawals, okay? That's that's all it is. That's all it is. <laughs> Cuts to the next day, and they're having their second session. Sarah's like, tell me, Mr. Connor, um, what was it like to die? Did it hurt? Damn. And he's like, um, fuck you talking. <laughs> She's like, I keep records. Detailed records of every single person who was ever killed by a Winchester rifle. What? Wow. And he's like, really? She's like, yeah, look over here. She opens up this case. There's all these books with people's names on them and the year they died. Ew. Wow. And like every book is about one person. It's fucking weird. She's like, you were dead for three minutes. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. And then he holds up the bullet. Oh. And she's like, oh, you saved it. <laughs> You saved it and you refurbished it, didn't you? And he's like, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's what I use to, uh, you know, stay grounded nowadays, you know? <laughs> so did it hurt? Fuck yeah, it did. What was it like? It hurt like shit. And then there was complete nothingness. And then all of a sudden it hurt again. And she's like, damn. Have you ever seen a spiritualist? No, but I hear you're all into that shit. She's like, yeah, I believe that people who leave this world... After that, they can see others who have less left this world. Like, see ghosts? Have you seen any ghosts here? And he's like, uh, no. <laughs> now, it's important to note that after her husband died, her baby died as well. And he's like, do you blame these ghosts, these shadows, for uh, the loss of your husband and child? She's like, no. But I got another question for you. Were you out of your room last night? <laughs> and he just goes... <laughs> yes and she's like thank you for being honest with me holy <laughs> shit so uh you know why is your house always under construction they want me to do it uh they yeah the ghosts <laughs> they make the plans didn't you see what i was doing last night and he's like yeah she's like yeah they want to reconstruct the rooms that they died in oh wow and they they designed them for me and he's like, Jesus Christ, you are fucking crazy. <laughs> She's like, no, for real. Like, uh, yeah. And I talk to these spirits, you know, they can, they can talk to me. And sometimes I, d I don't even know who I'm talking to. Sometimes it's an innocent bystander who was killed. Sometimes it's a criminal. Sometimes, man, it is someone else. Uh, whoa. What do you mean? Who? There is a spirit in this house right now that is more powerful than any that has ever been here before. And I don't know what the fuck to do about it. And he's like, huh, okay. 
She says, who, who all do you see in this room with us right now? Uh, just you and me. And she's like, oh, okay. I guess it'll take time. <laughs> Cutting to the next day, John Connor's walking around outside and he's talking to the gyro captain. <laughs> hey, you ever seen any ghosts here? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. I have heard some tall tales, some taller than others. Can I go into that garden room? <laughs> no. He's talking with Sarah again, and he's like, so what about after the room is finished? Okay, what happens then? She's like, then they can like face what happened to them, and they can move on. He's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, yeah. And then we just demolish that room, and we start over on the next one. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like a science now. Yes. Huh. It's kind of rational. It makes complete sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she is like performing a service up there She's at the Winchester buster. Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> she is a Ghostbuster. <laughs> He's like, what if they don't move on? Well, then we just lock them away. Fucking really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you do that? How do you lock a ghost away? With 13 nails. And then it shows the boards that they use across oh. the door. <laughs> Like we saw on the door to the garden room. 13, that's a devilish number. She's like, no, no, actually, if you look it up, it's actually quite a heavenly number. The movie does not explain it further. <laughs> anyway, I need you. I need you to help me get rid of this fucking spirit that is after Henry. Okay? You saw him with the bag on his head, doing all the crazy shit with the white eyes, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I chose you. Because you have died. Oh, wow. So you can see ghosts. Mm -hmm. If you're not seeing them yet, you will. Now we see the construction on the new room, the one she just designed last night. And the foreman is going over it with her, the foreman who is Tucker. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, so uh, she's psychic, we're sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> and the room is a room full of rifles. Like, so She's designed all of these fucking cabinets and shit. She wants them all put in there. And underneath... The drawing of the room, it just says rifles, 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 like forever. And he's like, so which model rifles would you like me to bring from the, you know, the company? Every one of them. Mm. John Connor is talking to Tucker later and he's like, so you uh, must make quite a profit off of this. Well, well, yeah, we're all thankful for, uh, you know, Miss Sarah's employment. Yeah. Can I go in that garden room? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's sealed. It's off limits. And he is like playing the same character from Insidious. It's fucking great. <laughs> it's like his grandfather. <laughs> John Connor goes and checks on Marion and Henry. And he's talking to Marion. And she's like, yeah, her husband died of TB. And right after that, man, she lost her little daughter, Annie. And right then we see Sarah going and looking in her safe again. And what's in there is a little lock of Annie's hair. Oh, Yeah, it's actually pretty fucking sad. And she thinks the curse is spreading. So she thinks me and Henry are like fucked. Now Tucker is like filling that room with rifles. And it's like the room is being completed. They've got this down to a science. They can knock a room out in like a couple of days. Wow. <laughs> Marion's like, yeah, she's just trying to protect us. Have you ever had to protect someone you love? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I did. And what happened? I died. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. She looks over at the bed where Henry has been resting ever since almost dying, and fucking Henry is gone again. Well, I was born by the snatch, and I don't want to die by the snatch. <laughs> and they're like, oh shit, everybody, go find Henry, go, go, go. We see in the rifle room, one of the rifles is being picked up by someone, and it's like, oh, Jesus. Sarah's looking for him, too, and she goes up that weird windy staircase with the stairs that are only like a couple inches high. And she's like, Henry, Henry, up at the fucking top of the stairs is white-eyed Henry pointing a fucking rifle at her, and he just fucking fires. Oh my and it's like a big fucking jump scare, and Jeez. I gotta I gotta be honest, it got me. Oh. <laughs> and she's like, holy shit. He misses her, like, just barely. And she goes tumbling down the stairs, and is she, like, turns around and is now on the other side of, like, the railing for the stairs. So she can't actually see him anymore. Mm -hmm. And she just starts yelling at him, Henry, Henry. It's it's Aunt Sarah, okay? Calm down. And then, boom, there's a fucking another bullet hole ha comes through the wall. He's fucking trying to shoot her. Whoa. She's like, chill the fuck out, man. It's me. And he's like, die. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> now the shooting has stopped. And she's like, uh, um, okay. <laughs> and then she like gets up 
and looks over the top of the railing. Henry is right fucking there, pointing the rifle at her fucking face. <laughs> and then he pulls the trigger. Click. It's fucking empty. Oh. Damn. And she's like, oh, Jesus Christ. And he's like, Rah! and he just starts beating her with the fucking rifle. Oh. Old lady Helen Mirren. Jesus. <laughs> okay. She's like, fucking taking one for the team. <laughs> John Connor jumps in and he fucking saves her ass and he like tackles the boy. They get him back in bed like, it's okay, man. You're just uh, having some kind of an episode. <laughs> They're like, are you okay, Sarah? She's like, oh, God. Yeah, but uh, check it out, man. This is the most powerful spirit that has ever been in this house. John's like, fuck that. We got to take this boy to a hospital. Something is fucking wrong with him. Sarah's like, no, no way, okay? You, you, you guys can't leave. Yeah, man, we're fucking leaving. And the kid's mom, Marion, is like, Aunt Sarah, come on. Um, I think maybe he's right. We, we should probably go to the hospital. No, man, you're fucking cursed just like me. It's going to follow you, and he's going to fucking die out there where I can't help you. She looks at Tucker, and she's like, seal this room. 13 nails right now. Oh. And they seal Marion and Henry into that fucking room. Like the kid's possessed. Okay. Mm. So John Connor goes downstairs and he makes a phone call to Harry Dick and Balls. And he's like, <laughs> I need you to send an ambulance, which is a horse and carriage. <laughs> and we need to ride to the fucking hospital. And the guy's like, yeah, sure. Is everything okay, though? Because uh... he's like, yeah, yeah, you're going to get what you want, man. Don't worry about it. And then he's like walking back upstairs and he runs into the servant houseboy, the one who ignored him for pouring the drink. Oh, yeah. Mm. And Sarah had sent all of the workers home for the day because they have to battle a ghost. <laughs> but he's still there. And he's like, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Connor. Uh, Mrs. Sarah, she has built here a vessel for communicating with the dead. Like, man, really? What the fuck are you talking? How do you know about this shit? I have seen things in this house, like some really horrible things. She can communicate with the dead, you know? People who met their end at, you know, with violence and, you know, there's criminals and victims here alike, you know, and you and I, we're, we're, we're kind of the same, you know, we can both see them. So like, Jesus Christ, you can see them too. Fuck yeah, man. And I'm telling you, you know, locking Miss Marion and Henry away like that, it's only going to delay the inevitable, the inevitable. Well, what's that? Well, you see, they're both Winchesters and they're all going to die. Yeah. And he fucking <laughs> vamps out into this horrible, fucking scary, fucking ghost face motherfucker. And then he disappears. Whoa. Ugh. The house boy was a ghost. Whoa. Damn. And that's why he ignored him when he wanted the drink poured. Oh my gosh. Nobody else could see him in the room. So John Connor runs into the rifle room where he finds Tucker and Sarah. And John's like, hey, uh, Sarah, you have a guy working here for you that is like, uh, something's wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> and she holds up this book, and it's got this old-timey photo in it of this, like, Civil War soldier. And then John's like, oh, holy shit, that's him. She's like, yeah, he's been dead for 20 years. <laughs> his name is Ben so-and-so, and, uh, both of his brothers died in the Civil War from Winchester Rifles. <laughs> And he got so pissed off that he decided he was going to go into the Winchester Repeating Arms Company and kill everybody. Oh, wow. Like he wanted to kill the Winchester family. And it shows him like outside the place in a flashback of when he was actually committing the crime. And before he walks into the Winchester Company, he pulls a fucking burlap bag over his head. And then he walks in and he fucking locks the door and he kills like 15 people. And then he goes and he sits down in the rifle showroom, which is the exact same room that she has just built in her house. Oh. And then the cops bust in and they kill him with Winchester rifles. Yeah. And it's like, damn. She's like, at midnight, he's going to be at his most powerful. And Sarah's like, I can feel him in the room. And then she starts walking around and she starts talking to him. She's like, Ben, please accept my deep remorse for your brothers who died at the hands of, you know, Winchester rifles and shit. Meanwhile, back in the room with Marion and Henry, Henry starts singing, and it's the same song that he heard somebody singing in the very beginning of the movie, and it turns out that that is Ben's song. Oh. There's a closet in the room with him that has one of those secret entrances inside of it, but it's like 
secured by 13 little coat hooks so ghosts can't pass through it. Um. And he's singing, and then the fucking house starts rumbling and shaking and shit. Back in the rifle room, Sarah's like, oh my god, it's Ben! He's doing it! And the house starts fucking falling apart and shit. Like, big time. There's like rubble falling and everything, and outside you can see like parts of it are crumbling and everything. This is where Tucker meets his demise. <laughs> oh. He gets like pulled out of the rifle room by this invisible force. Obviously, it's Ben. He fucking drags him out and then throws him down the stairs. And Tuck's like, oh, it's okay. I'm going to be all right. I'm a pretty tough guy. And then part of the house just falls on him and crushes oh. him to fucking death. Oh, God. Then the exact same thing happens to John Connor. He gets like, fuck it, pulled around the room and then thrown down the stairs. And this time he doesn't get crushed by the falling debris, but he gets trapped outside the rifle room. So now Sarah is in there by herself. John Connor is in this hallway that is full of doors that are sealed shut, each with 13 nails. Okay. So we know that those, there's ghosts in those rooms and they've been locked away. And then all the nails start to push out. Oh. And start tinking, ting, 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 onto the floor. And it's like, oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Marion finds the gyro captain butler dead. So, you know, mm. that's a thing. John Connor then turns a corner and runs into a fucking bare-chested and chained-up black slave with white eyes. He's a fucking ghost. <sighs> and he runs away from him. He's like, holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, no. All right. <laughs> Fear, it's, it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. It's okay. None of this is really happening. It's fine. Oh, my God. Okay. I, I have to get control of this. I have to get control of this. And then bzzz, there's this buzzing sound, right? And he looks over, and there's some panel on the wall with little labels for the different rooms in the house. And he can tell that someone is buzzing from the garden room. Cuts to Marion, and she is searching for Henry. She's ended up walking down the same hallway that John Connor was just in, where all the nails popped out of the wood. Uh Yeah. And all the doors are still shut. She's like, all right, holy shit, okay. She turns around a corner, and then she just hears, she turns back and looks down the hallway. All the fucking doors are open. John Connor has had enough of being shut out of the garden room, and he goes and fucking rips the board down and walks inside. There is a rocking chair. There's, You know, it's like all these old plants and shit are in there, but there's a rocking chair right in the middle of the room, and it's just... Steadily rocking. It doesn't stop when he walks in or anything like that. It's like actively haunting. (laughs) He walks up to it and stops it with his two hands. And then he hears his wife, Ruby, talking to him. And she's like, I always loved our garden room, babe. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And he's like, oh, holy shit. She's like, tell me the story again about the farmer and the old mule. He's like, no, this can't be happening. This isn't happening. And she's like, yeah, the farmer, his old mule, he, he fell in a well. And he, he knew that the mule would die. So he decided to just bury him in the well and fill it in. But with every shovel full of dirt that hit the old mule's back, the mule knew that he could just shake it off and then stand up. So all the farmer had to do was fill in the well with dirt and the mule just walked out. And then John Connor turns around and there's his fucking wife. Fucking standing there in the room with him. Wow. Damn. She's like, I always heard the voices. He's like, the voices you were hearing weren't fucking real, babe. She's like, no, no, they were, they were. You called it a delusional disorder, didn't you? That's what you called it. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it fucking was. She's like, well, I just, I need you to believe me. And then she picks up a Winchester rifle and points it under her chin. Oh. And this is happening to him right in front of him, but it's clear that this is how she died. Mm -hmm. so before she shoots herself he's like no and he runs to grab the gun from her as he does so it discharges and shoots him in the chest then he falls down and he's like bleeding and then she kills herself after she sees that shit so that's how he got shot and died for three minutes oh my gosh and that's how she died and ended up at the Winchester mansion damn what a coincidence yeah (laughs) damn So he's laying there and he's not bleeding out of his chest anymore. Now we see that he just has a scar on his chest. And we hear her say, you need to let go of your guilt so that I can let go of mine. And he's like, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry, babe. And now she's gone. And he just sits up and he is fucking surrounded by ghosts. They're all just standing there fucking staring at him. And they're from all walks of life. 
from back then. You know, like one of them is like an old American Indian and he looks like a fucking old warrior and shit. <laughs> and they all look over to the left. And so he follows their gaze and there's this big hatchet on the shelf. So they obviously want him to take it. So he takes the hatchet and he runs. He goes back through the house and he is looking for the fucking rifle room again. Try, he has to find another way in, okay? Because it was collapsed. The hallway collapsed. Mm -hmm. On the stairs, he finds the slave who just opens his hands and dumps out 13 nails and then leaves. He picks up the nails and he keeps going up the stairs and they stop at the ceiling. There's nothing there. They just lead nowhere. So he chops through the fucking ceiling and goes up through it and is in the rifle room. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Ruby is there, his wife, and she just points like, yep, go get it done, baby. So in the room, he finds Sarah and she's got her black veil on and she's like, you're kind of shaking. And uh, we don't know whether or not what's going on with her, like if she's possessed yet or not, because she doesn't look very panicked. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she says, something is disrupting the power of this house and something must be done about it. And now we see she's got a Winchester rifle laying on the table. So it's like, oh shit, she might kill him. Elsewhere, Marion is still searching for Henry and she's following his singing and it leads her down into the basement. John Connor looks at Sarah and he's like, all right, I've, I can see ghosts now in your house. And she's like, yeah, you were, uh, you were killed by a Winchester rifle. Yep, you were dead for three minutes. Yep, now you're connected to this house. And he's like, yeah, all right, what do we do now? We see that Marion finds Henry in the basement, and he's right in front of the furnace, okay? And it, like, flames up, and it's all fucking hot and shit. Sarah's like, the only way to save Marion and Henry is to stop Ben here and now. And she starts talking to Ben. Ben, you leave them alone, okay? You, you speak to me. And downstairs... Henry, he's got his white eyes because he's fucking possessed. And Sarah yells out, Ben, you talk to me. You leave Henry alone. You come to me. And downstairs, Henry like starts flipping out and his hands are all like clenched in fists and shit. And then all of a sudden the ghost leaves his body and travels up into the rifle room. So now Marion and Henry, yep, they're both okay. No one's possessed. But now there are ghosts closing in on them in the basement that they can't see. Sarah gets possessed by Ben now, and she's like speaking in his voice, and he's like, I want you to suffer. She picks up the fucking rifle, and she starts pointing it, like she points it at herself. John Connor's like, no, stop doing that shit. <laughs> and then she fucking points it at him, and John Connor can see that it's Ben standing behind her, holding up her rifle for her. Oh. It's a pretty scary little shot there. <laughs> and then Ben makes all of those big ornate cabinets in the room like start flying around and shit john connor has to narrowly evade one as it falls and it falls down over the hole that he chopped in the floor sarah's like yo 13 nails nail that fucking shelf to the floor right fucking now oh. and john connor's like all right sweet and he starts nailing the nails in with the butt of the hatchet okay mm-hmm and he's like, yeah, 10, 11, 12. He gets to the very last nail. He's about to pound it in when his hatchet just flies out of his hand and almost cuts Sarah's fucking head off. Oh. <laughs> he's got one last nail to put in. No hatchet now. So he grabs the fucking Winchester rifle right out of Sarah's hand and starts hammering the nail in with the butt of the gun. <laughs> and they're like, fuck yeah, okay, he's trapped now. All right, what do we do? And then Sarah starts getting fucking flung around the room. This old lady, she's taking some abuse in this movie. <laughs> she flings up against the wall and she's like being choked. You know, you can see. And John Connor can see Ben standing there, like holding her up on the wall, choking her to death. And John Connor starts fucking shooting him. And it turns out the rifle he is using is the same model that Ben used to kill all of his victims. Oh, so it's like he's got to shoot him with his own gun. And all the bullets are just going through him. He's like, they're, they're just going through him, Sarah. What the fuck do I do? And she's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> she's like, he's scared of something in the room. It's got to be his gun. Well, they're, they're fuck. It's not doing anything to him. And she's like, oh, my God, it's it's not the gun. It's it's it's. And then John Connor reaches into his pocket and he pulls out his together forever bullet. And that is what Ben was afraid of in the room. So he fucking opens the Winchester rifle and loads that one round into it. Damn. Oh. 
And Ben's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so this bullet, it's the bullet that killed John Connor, but it's also the bullet that saved him. Because, you know, he, he refurbished it and used it to remember his wife, I guess. Yeah. Meanwhile, Marion and Henry are down there uh, getting accosted by a couple of ghosts. And it turns out that they are Ben's fucking brothers. Oh. And Marion's like remembering the dollar bill trick and shit and the, the stuff about fear that John Connor was saying to her. So she's like repeating it. And she's like, I am not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fighter. His brothers are like coming for her. They're pretty close now. Back up in the rifle room. Ben has made all of the rifles in the whole room, like float up into the air and point at John Connor. And it's like, all right, dude, better do something quick. You're about to be <laughs> fucking Swiss cheese. And then Ben is standing on the other side of him and he pulls his bag down over his head and he fucking disappears. John Connor's like, oh shit, oh shit, where is he? And then he hears Ruby's voice in his head and she's like, see the truth. And now he can see Ben. So he shoots the fucker with his magic love bullet. <laughs> and Ben fucking goes down. And we see only the bag hits the floor. Like there's no nobody. And then Sarah's like, you did it. You did it. You, you killed him. You know, again. <laughs> He's at peace now. He's with his brothers. And we see a nice version of Ben like laying on the ground now. And he like looks dead but at peace. Mm-hmm. The two ghosts downstairs that were about to get to Marion, they just like, oh, okay, I guess we got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're still there. They just kind of like put their hands down. And then Sarah yells out into the house. She's like, everyone else return to your rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of the other fucking doors start like shutting. Bloom, 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 bloom. Fucking ghosts. They just do what she says. <laughs> so now that all that's over, John Connor's going to write his review. <laughs> And he's like, it shows him doing it. And he's like, yes, you know, uh, I need to report that Sarah Winchester is of sound mind. Oh. And uh, she is able to run this company for as long as she sees fit. So fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> shows the next day and all the workers are back. You know, everybody's coming back in. The house is like torn asunder. Like it's like almost demolished. Like a lot of it has, has fallen apart. Wow. John Connor walks into the garden room. And he's like looking around like, yeah, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> and he says, it's time for us both to leave and we're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, his wife has already like been at peace and she's moved on. So then he walks out and uh, he finds Marion and Henry. And it's like, hey, man, you're a husband who needs a family. They're a family who needs a husband. <laughs> Y'all should just say goodbye and go your separate ways. And so they do. Oh, wow. There is no sex to be had. Damn. That's not fair. I know. Well, he's a drug addict. <laughs> he's okay. He's okay. He went through a day. Damn. Yeah. Dude. She cut off his drug supply, and he was like, time to solve a grand mystery. <laughs> <laughs> he's ready. He goes, and he's saying goodbye to Sarah, and she's like, listen, Ruby loved you, man. She loved you even after her death. That didn't change. And he's like, yeah, okay, thanks. So uh, what are you going to do now? I guess your your house is all torn apart and fucked, right? And she's like, not if anything to say about it. <laughs> she's like i'm going to rebuild it of course <laughs> and then the screen fades to black but we get some blurb and it says the great earthquake of 1906 was the most destructive in fucking like u.s history or something mm -hmm. so here's the thing this movie took place in 1906 and that's what they're saying is that that's why the house crumbled mm -hmm. oh that's how the house crumbling is explained to the rest of the world. But now we know what really happened. <laughs> After that, it says, Sarah continued to build this house like further and further out until her death in 1922. So like almost another 20 years. Wow. The Winchester Mansion remains one of the most haunted places in America. <laughs> and then it shows the one and only remaining photograph of the real Sarah Winchester. And it's just her sitting in a carriage. And Helen Mirren looks just fucking like her. Wow. <laughs> it's fucking cool. And that's it, man. The credits roll. 
All Woo-hoo. right. Good yep. job, Ron. Thanks. There you have it. Winchester on movies with Ron. Yeah. Got pretty interesting at the end there. <laughs> yeah. Took a little while to get there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Rick? I thought it was good. Yeah. Kind of a coincidence that got him out of all of the problems, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, didn't really take any hard work. All it took was being there and being the right guy. Well, he was the right guy because he was killed by a Winchester rifle. That's why she chose him. Yeah, but him defeating the dude with the love bullet, that's the weak link to me. Yeah? Yeah. They, they required no effort. Just required dying and having his wife die, you know? Good thing he saved that bullet. <laughs> <laughs> The real effort was staying off drugs. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard the real story was uh, she was an amateur architect, and women couldn't go to architecture school back then. Oh. So she just experimented on her house, doing all these different rooms and not caring. It was like her, her draft book so that she would be able to go on and design other houses. But, she, you know, she was an old lady, so she, she never reached that point. She was just trying to, like... Hone her skill at being an architect. Oh. that That's why <laughs> staircases never went anywhere. What? It was just an experiment. She was just playing around, being super rich and paying guys to do her shit, you know? <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Way to uh, drive it home there. <laughs> hey, you know, it's, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun story. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has been called a bland horror. <laughs> oh. I felt like you made it more colorful, uh, but it seems like a better TV series. Don't you think? Small yeah. sets. All you need is the house, but every episode is a different room. Sure. A different, a different ghost to You're solve. You're damn right. This, yeah. this, yep, it, it could it be could a be show. Endless uh, construction on the house, you know? Season one could be one looking type of looking house. Season eight is going to be a different fucking house, you know? Wow. Be a good TV series. That is a show I probably would not watch. (laughs) Be like an X-Files kind of show. Yeah. I didn't watch that shit either. (laughs) So what's next week, guys? Next week is 1982's Pieces. Yeah. Oh, man. This is the final part in our trilogy of requests (laughs) for Sal Roma. Sorry we missed a week, Sal, but, uh, you know, I wanted to see Winchester. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be fun. Sal, you're my pal. All right, folks. If you're using Apple Podcasts, oh man, I'd love it if you'd hit that tab for the ratings and reviews. Go ahead and tell us what you think. We want to hear from you. You can find us on all your other favorite podcast apps, movieswithron.com. There's a Twitter at movieswithron. We got a Facebook page. It's been fun. Yep. Love you. See you guys. Take care. Movies with Ron. How'd you cook those um those things in there? With the my pan. dude. <laughs> the frying pan. So you just made a big tortilla and then fried it, flipped it a couple times? Yeah, but I used two tortillas to make a sandwich. Yeah. Did you use oil? Yeah, you spray oil on the pan to get the... Tortilla nice and crispy. You want to learn how to make a quesadilla? I want one so bad. (laughs) Like right now? And the barbecue Uh, sauce, I'm like like fantasizing about it. Give it like 20 minutes. minutes. You're not allowed to have any more. We're all allowed to, but not you. (laughs) There's not many left. I'm like, I got to get some now, too. I want one. She's like, barbecue sauce. Dude, listen to Hellraiser. Holy I know. shit. <laughs> Did you sh- use just regular cheddar cheese? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I used Walmart brand Fiesta cheese. Okay, okay. God damn. <laughs> I'm making those. Did you use pre- <laughs> pre-cooked chicken and bacon? There's also a, a special sour cream mayonnaise spread. It's oh. on one of the tortillas. Well, it gives it a special creaminess. Well, where'd you find this recipe? Clem. I'll send it to you. Okay. Fucking nerd. <laughs> Quesadilla nerd. <laughs>
She does not care about being here right now. <laughs> yes, I do. She's checked out. <laughs> I just want to make She's in a things. room full of quesadillas. <laughs> <laughs> now this movie's really good, actually. 